Hello, everybody at E2 TOEFL. My name is Mark. I am your TOEFL expert here at E2. And today, we're going to take a look at one of the most challenging parts of the TOEFL exam, and that is the integrated speaking task. So in this video, we will briefly review the TOEFL integrated speaking task. What does it require? What do you need to do? And then we're going to learn more specifically about how to enhance your speaking and speaking score with improved pronunciation. To start, let's take a look at what you have to do in the TOEFL integrated speaking task. First step, you will be given a text and you'll have to read it. It'll be on the screen for a very short time and then it will disappear. So you will have to take notes. Make sure that you practice taking notes and that you expect to take notes. A lot of students who have gone and taken the test, uh, they often come back to me and say, yeah, I did not realize how much I was going to depend on my notes. So uh, I hope you don't have to learn the hard way how important it is to make sure that you're taking notes. The second part, you'll then hear a lecture that will extend upon the reading. So this might either support or extend the ideas shown there, or it may actually contradict them. So it'll go against what is said there. So you'll want to pay attention. To what extent does the lecture agree or disagree or support or contradict the reading? And that's actually going to help you with your pronunciation. I'll show you why very soon. Finally, uh, you'll have 30 seconds to prepare your answer. So you look at your notes, you think about what you're going to say, you might be quickly thinking about some of the things you're going to learn here, and then you'll have 60 seconds, one full minute, to deliver your summary of the reading and the listening while highlighting any ways in which the listening supports the reading or contradicts the reading. Two very general tips that I would also like to say. Uh, first of all, the listening part. This is a very common situation I hear with new TOEFL students. They sometimes have difficulty generally listening to the recording, listening to the lecture. The general advice I give here is build strong listening habits. All right, so whether that's listening to the radio regularly, sources like perhaps BBC Radio or ABC National Radio in Australia, or potentially podcasts. And these should be podcasts that are accessible to you on topics that are familiar and where there's a good enough quality in the editing that you're actually able to follow the content. Be very careful with podcasts. Uh, even some people with really good intentions can make podcasts that can be difficult to follow sometimes. So don't worry if you find a podcast and then you listen and you're, you're thinking, this might not be the right one for me. Um, it sometimes takes time, but keep looking for something that you can enjoy and that you can benefit from, and you'll be on your way. Secondly, in terms of preparation, practice taking notes. My favorite thing when I teach a TOEFL class is that on the first day, a lot of the students will say, teacher, I, I'm just going to listen because it's really hard for me to listen and take notes at the same time in English, to which I say, that's because you need to practice. So when you're listening to the radio, when you're preparing, take notes. The first few times, it's going to be difficult, but you must train your brain to be able to listen and take notes effectively at the same time. In the E2 TOEFL platform, we have lessons on ideas for how to take notes. Really, you want to come up with a system that works for you, but with time, you will get better at this. Now, today, we're not going to look at the reading, we're not going to look at the speaking, but we are going to look at some notes from a TOEFL reading and speaking. Now, the main thing with the notes is that you want to be sure that you've listened and you've read and you've made sense of it. So if we look here at the notes I've made, you can see here I've simply got reading, I've got the title, and in this case they were talking about actor-observer, and then I've made a few notes here. We focus on situation or external factors when us, and then I've highlighted difference. 
We focus on character, personality, when others. So I've got very simple notes here, which I'm then going to put into my summary. Now, in my lecture notes, I've written down here very specifically extends and supports with an anecdote. So I would even say a word like an or with, you don't necessarily need, but just for today's lesson, I wanna point out that we talk about prof supports extends, that's clear to me because during the actual one minute of delivery, I don't wanna be thinking about it. The more I think, the slower I'm going to speak, and that's gonna affect my pronunciation and sentence stress, and that could affect my score. Then I've got here shopping. Guy cuts in front, he's rude. Then I've got professor cuts, justifies because of situation. Now again, we aren't able to look at the reading and listening today, but you can see here I've got my notes, and I'm gonna show you what my response looks like. So today we're gonna to look at how we can use stress, particularly sentence stress, to enhance our score in TOEFL. Now a very common way that people look at stress is they will say, add stress to key words or important words. But that can actually be quite difficult. You have no idea what those words are gonna be and you're not thinking in the test, oh, an important word is coming up so I'm gonna stress it. We really want you to develop habits of using sentence stress, not for important words, but for how important ideas are connected, all right? That is a bit more predictable, and in a few minutes, you'll understand how this works. Now, if we take a look here at my screen, I've written out a potential TOEFL integrated speaking task response. And you'll see here, there's some language that you might be able to use in your upcoming TOEFL exam, but also we're gonna talk about how to deliver the words more effectively. Now, the first thing that most TOEFL teachers will say is add stress to keywords. Now, as I said, that's difficult. How do I know what the keywords are? I will say this, the main topic is almost always going to be a keyword. So if we look at my sample here, I've underlined the key idea here. The text describes the actor-observer relationship. Now, a lot of students, when they're first starting this, I'll often hear something like this. The text describes the actor-observer relationship. Grammar's great, pronunciation is a bit flat. So we wanna add a little bit of stress and pause. The text describes the actor-observer relationship. Perfect, you've added stress and you've done it very quickly. That's the first thing and the one thing that I would say everybody wants to think about. Add stress to that main focus of the reading and the listening. Now, let's add beyond that because we don't wanna start with that first sentence with beautiful sentence stress and then continue with, which is a phenomenon that describes how we look at the behavior. You can see it's, it's quite flat. So how do we think about sentence stress in our TOEFL speaking task? One thing you can look at first is contrast. Words that show opposite ideas or they show this relationship that has one side or another in TOEFL. So if you look at my answer now, all of these red words are compared with another idea later in the text. Let me show you an example with the first sentence again. Now I might say something like this. The text describes the actor-observer relationship. I then finish that part of the speaking task and I go on to the next part. In the lecture, the professor expands on this by describing his own. So you can see there, in the text, in the lecture, so I'm using my sentence stress to show that I've got two different ideas. Now I know what you're thinking, that's a lot of stress. If you don't get the first one, if you don't get, you know, the text describes the actor-observer relationship, but then later you say, the lecture then talks about, that's more than enough. You don't have to stress every single contrasting word, but practice it. Try, try stressing a few of these words when you're practicing. And you know, you could be practicing in your TOEFL class, 
you could be practicing a little bit on the train, on the way to work, or on the bus, thinking about how you might use stress. And don't worry, it's not just your TOEFL exam. You're gonna need this in university. You might need this at your job if you're delivering presentations in English as well. So, you know, you might be thinking, okay, you know, I'm taking the test and when it's, when it's over, I can forget all this. But actually, the more important use of your presentation skills and your pronunciation is probably gonna be after the TOEFL test. So just remember that. If we continue looking at some of these other red words, you can see that I've continued to highlight contrasts. Let's continue looking at my text. The text describes the actor-observer relationship, which is a phenomenon that describes how we look at the behavior of ourselves and others through a different lens. So again, ourselves and others through a different lens. I have my sentence stress, I stress those words, and then my intonation comes down. So think about this, which is better? Which is a phenomenon that describes how we look at the behavior of ourselves and others. Or, which is a phenomenon that describes how we look at the behavior of ourselves and others through a different lens. So just by adding a bit of stress there, I've made a bit of a difference in the pronunciation. There are a few more. We often look at our behavior based on situations while we judge others' behavior based on their personality or character. Again, stress, stress. You can continue to see more. Uh, in the second part, he immediately became annoyed and judged the man to be rude. And then later on, and this time he was in a hurry. In this situation, he didn't consider himself rude or selfish. So again, I'm comparing he became annoyed and judged the man in one situation, but then in the compared situation, uh, he didn't consider himself rude. So I've added the stress there. Now, again, you don't have to hit all of these red words, but if you get the ones at the end, in this situation, he didn't consider himself rude. Perfect. You're being very clear with the relationship between the ideas within the text. And that's what's really important. Not just that you're giving correct information and that you're giving correct uh, grammar, but that you're saying it in a way that is highlighting the relationship. There's more. So we don't just have to look at contrasts. We can also look at lists. This is another common way that we use sentence stress to highlight ideas. Now there's two ways you can do it. You can do it with a list, or you can do it with the connector of a list. So you'll see here, the first one we have, uh, look at the behavior of ourselves and others through a different lens. You could do both. The behavior of ourselves and others through a different lens, or the behavior of ourselves and others through a different lens. They both work. Practice whatever makes you happy. As we move on to the end of that paragraph, the end of the first section of our answer, you'd say here, uh, we judge others' behavior based on their personality or character, or based on their personality or character. Both of those would work. And you can see in the second part of my answer, it happens again. Uh, he judged the man to be rude, selfish, and inconsiderate, or rude, selfish, and inconsiderate. So again, I'm using that stress, I have nice flow, and my intonation goes down. Moving on, we've got sequencing. These are very common, predictable words that are gonna come up in many parts of the speaking test, but let's take a look at these. In the second part, we're talking about the lecture and we describe the professor telling the information. He starts with a story about a visit to the grocery store when someone cut in front of him. Then he describes how a few days later he was at the store again, and this time he was in a hurry. So again, we can use these different words that show sequence and add a bit of stress to those to highlight first this happened and then this happened. Remember, if you don't use sentence stress, it's not wrong but you're missing the potential of a higher score because your 
pronunciation has highlighted the connection of ideas. Finally, emphasis words. This is the easiest one, I think. Um, just words like more, most, never, didn't. Uh, these very basic words that will come up in almost every uh, TOEFL speaking task that you can do. And you can see this one's quite simple. If we look towards the end of the spoken response, um, he was cutting off a woman who was also heading to that line and who had a lot of things to buy. In this situation, he didn't consider himself rude or he didn't consider himself rude or selfish. Based on the situation, he thought he had done nothing wrong. Again, all of these are possibilities. Now, if you're looking at that answer, you're seeing a lot of color. And no, you absolutely do not have to have all of these. In fact, it might sound a little bit strange if you have all of them. So just practice it a little bit and get a few, and that alone would be enough to help bring up your score. All right, everyone, so I'll read through this task, I'll read through this answer, and I'm gonna add some sentence stress, and to be honest, I'm gonna do it kind of randomly, so I'm not thinking too much about it. I will say there's some, like text and lecture. If I don't get them both, I will probably at least get lecture. I think that one's a very predictable one that you might need in the test, so you might as well practice it. So here we go. The text describes the actor-observer relationship, which is a phenomenon that describes how we look at the behavior of ourselves and others through a different lens. We often look at our behavior based on situations, while we judge others' behavior based on their personality or character. In the lecture, the professor expands on this by describing his own personal experience. He starts with a story about a visit to the grocery store when someone cut in front of him. He immediately became annoyed and judged the man to be rude, selfish, and inconsiderate. Then he describes how a few days later, he was at the store again. And this time, he was in a hurry. He saw a short checkout line and he ran for it, cutting off a woman who was also heading to that line and who had a lot of things to buy. In this situation, he didn't consider himself rude or selfish. Based on the situation, he thought he had done nothing wrong. So again, that stress adds a bit of emphasis. I'm not doing all of it, and I'm still managing to keep a relatively smooth and faster pace. Not too fast, but I'm not slowing down too much with excessive uh, sentence stress. It takes time. Do make sure that you practice. So that's all I really want you to think about in this. Uh, it's a really good way to practice your speaking. And, and by the way, this is something you're going to use later in life as well. Uh, if you're going to university or if you're working at a company and you need to give a presentation, this is what you're gonna be practicing. You're going to be doing this exact kind of practice. So don't, don't just think this is for the TOEFL test. This is gonna help you in other aspects of your uh, academic or professional life as well. So remember, don't just look for keywords. Maybe find one or two keywords, probably the focus of the task. Second, think about words that show connection. Words that are showing how ideas are connected, just like the ones we saw there. Remember, you don't have to get all of them. In fact, you really shouldn't try to get all of them. Just getting a few is gonna be enough to possibly bring up that score. And of course, practice and get feedback. Here at E2, we have tasks available for our students to practice with and then submit for feedback. So that's it, everybody. Sentence stress is one simple way that you can start working on your TOEFL integrated speaking task. My name is Mark from here at E2. Thank you very much and good luck.